It's a popular belief that the secret to happiness is living in the present moment. But buyers here at the Harrisburg sale are finding a lot of joy planning for the future. I'm Heather Vitale for Harness Racing Update, and this is day three of the yearling sale. The session began at 10 a.m. with hip number 521, and trainer Joe Holloway struck early with the second horse to walk into the ring. The Hall of Fame trainer signed for the $75,000 purchase consigned by Vu Curry Farms, named Blue Angel. Joe, I just want to get a feel on the sale. How is it going for you? Uh, it's going fine. I don't buy that many horses, so it's easy. It's, it's easy. You know, the prices seem to be down this year a bit, so I don't know. Does that make it a buyer's market? Uh, not necessarily, because if uh, they want it, they're willing to pay. And so it's kind of spotty. It's up and down. And this is a man who knows what he wants, and he goes to get it. We were right here in day three. It's just the beginning. The second horse that went through the ring, uh, hip number 522, Blue Angel. What did you love about this colt? Uh, to me, he looked a lot like she'd be stinging, and that's the family. So that's pretty much the way she looked when she was a baby. What's the best horse you've ever gotten from Harrisburg? Hey, it could be Blue Angel, who knows, but <laughs> that you've actually raced. Uh... Probably um, modern art. Okay, all right. And so, as far as coming to the sale, you go through the book. You say, "I'm doing things day one, day two." How many have you bought? Uh, four. All right. And so, how many do you think you're going to be training down? Uh, training down, uh, fourteen. All right. So you got some homebreds and you got some at Lexington. Yes, and okay. that's it. All right. So you're off back to New Jersey now. Yes. All right. And I'm holding you up a little bit. That's okay. Okay. I'll, I'll be home by 1230. All right. Perfect. All right. Well, I'll see you for lunch later. Okay. <laughs> it's safe to say Joe wasn't getting back to Jersey by lunchtime. A couple more yearlings caught his eye and he ended up staying in the Keystone State for a hip number 615. Always be fleet a $32,000 purchase, and hip number 652, Evan Sense, a $40,000 yearling. We also checked in with trainer Jim King Jr., who sets up shop with his wife Joanne along the back walking ring to see how the sale's been shaping up for him so far. How is the sale going for you? You think you're getting any good deals? Well, that's our, uh, that's our hopes and dreams here. That's what brings us here, but uh, only time can tell that. So the numbers show that the gross is down with the sale. So in theory, it's a buyer's market? Well, I think the quality horses are bringing money. Uh, the other ones were looking for bargains, and that kind of kind of puts me in line there. That's what I'm looking for. I've got the need to take horses home that can earn money so I can come back again. I know, I heard you took home a Poppy Rob Hanover, uh, first year sire, so I think you're pretty excited about that, right? Or at least I know your wife is. And that's the way it is. My, <laughs> my wife, that's what we came for, is for her to get a Poppy Rob Hanover, and we, we have one, and uh, maybe we'll get another one before it's all over, but uh, they're very, very good looking horses, uh, especially the Colts. They're just very mannish looking, they're, they're real horsey looking. And uh, the Phillies are nice looking too, and uh, I, I can't imagine that he's not going to be all he's supposed to be. How many total yearlings will you be working with this winter? I expect they'll probably be around 15 altogether with the homebreds, uh, Kentucky, and in here. Are you planning on retiring ever? <laughs> well, well I, there's not a nice way to put that, but no. <laughs> Thank you, Jim. <laughs> yeah, for sure. And we chatted with Heather Wilder, who picked up a couple of 2022 foals with her husband Mike before heading south to the Sunshine State. This is the part of the show that I like to call Heather Squared, something <laughs> like that. Um, so yes, of course, Heather Wilder, my homie for HRU is here. And while I'm working, getting interviews, she's working buying horses. So how's the sale working out for you? 
Well, it's been pretty tough, honestly. The ones that we liked have been going out of our range. You saw me a couple times throwing my sucker in the dirt. Um, but we've been fortunate enough to get two so far, so I'm happy. We have two more that we like, so hopefully we'll be taking them home. Do you have a favorite that you can tell us about that you have? Um, well, I'll tell you about both of them. I got a Heston uh, blue chip colt that I really like um, out of a family I tried to buy. We had the sister, um, and she had a captain sell yesterday. We couldn't get her. Burke's got her. Um, loved her. Um, but we were able to get from the same family. So the Heston Colt is from that family. And then we got a green shoe Colt, which uh, I was just over here talking to some of the PA horsemen, and they, they liked it as well. So I'm excited about both of them. So where do you go from here? I know it's someplace warm, so don't rub it in too much. <laughs> well, hopefully we get one more horse, and then, yes, we'll be heading straight down to Spring Garden Ranch. So I'm excited to get there. And you'll stay there for how long? So we leave and come home. Usually some of the horses, if they're in series, will head home the end of March. Um, but Mike and I usually try to come home by the end of April. Uh, enjoy your time in Florida. Hopefully I can come visit. And, you know, uh, Heather and I, we do actually, this is full disclosure. We're like best friends. Yes, we yes, are. Yes, yes we're, we're a team. When people say Heather's, I've heard other people say, oh, that's not good. That's never good when we're together. So, <laughs> Here so, comes yes. trouble. Yes. All right. So exactly. let's not ruin that reputation. Yes. We're going to exactly. keep it like that. So thank yes. you. And I will see you soon. Thank you for interviewing me. See you soon, too. Bye. While many states like New Jersey, New York, and Pennsylvania are well represented at the Standard Bread Horse Sales Company auction, we pulled aside Mississippi natives Oscar Johnson, Archie Buford, and King Pickett, who were also jumping into the yearling game. I got three first timers here at the Harrisburg sale. We're going to start with Oscar. Now, Oscar, your first time at Harrisburg, how do you like it? I love it. It's a great place to be. Great horses here. Good competitive horses here, it looks like to me. Now, you're from Mississippi, so how did you get into racing? Uh, I got into racing, uh, dealing with Lawrence Cooper, hanging around the Cooper Down track, and I started loving it from there. And obviously you can see, you know, Oscar's slightly taller than me. Um, and I've even got heels on. I, you actually used to play for the NFL, is that right? Yes, ma'am. Tell me a little more about that. Uh, I, well, high school, I didn't know how good I was until I got to college then. Went from college to the lead, not from the lead to the horse. All yeah. right. So now Oscar... I met him first racing at Shenandoah Downs. Yes. yes. Okay. So that's what we're going to bring Archie in because this is the interesting part. I met Archie at Shenandoah Downs as well. Okay. Which is in Virginia. If you guys don't know, Archie also from Mississippi. Now, uh, tell me about this whole deal with being a leading trainer. You are along with two other guys. Well, they kind of got in my business a little bit, you know, but, uh, it, it, we did well there. I'm glad uh, we got a chance to, uh, you know, for the three-way tie. <laughs> Is it safe to say that you and Oscar are best friends? Yeah, that's my, we've been friends a long time. You know, that's my big homie. And uh, so it was Oscar, Archie, and Jerry Longo who were in that three-way tie as leading trainer at Shenandoah Downs. And you and Oscar actually grew up together in Mississippi and learned about harness racing at the same time? Just about, yeah. I started a little before him, but, you know, okay. yeah, just about, around about the same time, yeah. And you're having a good time here in Pennsylvania? Yeah, I'm having a great time in Pennsylvania. I, I kind of like it here. Better <laughs> stock. <laughs> all right, now, this is where we bring King in. Uh, all right, so you actually are not in harness racing yet, but you are friends with Oscar and Archie mm -hmm. from Mississippi. Tell me about that. Uh, I, I grew up around them, and you know they've they've had harness horses my whole life. It's something I always saw. Didn't know that I'd get into it because I grew up rodeoing, so I was on the other side of it. But I've I've always been in the you know horse industry. So, so tell me about this rodeo deal because um, yeah, you're like kind of a big deal, right? That's what I hear. I mean, I try to be. I, I'm not gonna brag on myself. I'm just humble. But yeah, I'm a professional rodeo athlete, and I've competed at the biggest stages of rodeo. So. I, I know you're being humble, but I, I don't care. I need to see this bling. The bling, I'm telling you, oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, my gosh. Now, 
That is so, so King. King is your actual name? You were first named name. King? Yes. Okay, all right. How do you like Harrisburg? It's your first time. I like it. It's cool. It's a good environment. Uh, a lot of horses is really, like, I'm really learning to love the harness racing just from coming to this sale. Like, I want to buy them all. So, but I'm going to slowly work my way into it. Uh, and I can see this being something for my pastime hobby. So. so I know you bought a horse yesterday. Oscar bought a horse. Archie bought a horse. So what are you going to do about who's going to train? I mean, you've got two of your friends are the leading trainer from Shenandoah. Is it going to be Oscar or Archie? I'm just going to send the horse with them, whatever they work out. I, I trust them. I know they'll get it done. So. That's a great answer. And uh, actually, I got to let these guys go, especially King, because you're heading out in like a few minutes to go somewhere. Yeah, I got to go to Las Vegas. So I got a rope in the morning and then leave there and go to Cali. Rope there Friday. So I'm kind of on the run right now. Well, best of luck with your horses and with the rodeo. Thank you so much. Thank you. I know we had three horses that went about $100,000 or more, but you know, for me, this was more like the price range for a lot of people that come out and it's day three and it's a great vibe. Right, yeah, the vibe was good today and uh, you know, the vibe was good kind of all week, but it was just, it's just, I, and I heard twice today about people not releasing their money because they're afraid. They're afraid of the economy and what's going on, they're not sure. Their ancillary money they want to hang on to right now. It's amazing between Lexington and here just what went on, you know. I mean, they had a great catalog, but we had one too. But it's just in three or four weeks, it's been a huge difference. But, uh, yeah, it was a good day today. I mean, the auctioneers even said people were ready to bid and ready to go. And, and uh, you know, we ended up, I'm, I'm not sure where we ended up. I haven't been able to get the numbers, but... I'm sure we're probably around the same percentage down, but we're okay with that, you know. Long, most of the people are happy, most. Yesterday we talked about a couple sellers whose horses went for higher than they thought they were going to go for, and I know there's been a lot of buyers who've been very happy because they're like, oh my gosh, I didn't think I'd be able to get that horse, and then they were able to get them, you know. Right. So, I, you know, honestly, like, I mean, it's, it's still a great sale. Yeah, yeah, we still had a great sale. It's a great sale all the way around. And I, again, as I always say, I can't thank all of them enough. And the buyers, the consigners, the breeders, and everyone, you know, we do everything we can, but we can't push the arms up. We can't push the hands up. They frown upon that. <laughs> but, uh, you know, we'll be back. We'll be back at it. And, uh, you know, we're still one of the highest grossing sales, you know, up in the top five, top six of all time. So... I can't be sad about it, but when I see one person that's not happy, that bugs me, bothers me. Now, I know you take it personally, but we've got the mixed sale tomorrow, which is always a lot of fun. Oh, yeah. Looking forward to that, and there's a lot of people that are. And right now, I'm not sure if they're all for that, but we have over right around 200 online bidders. So people have been saying the crowd looks a little down. I think that's some of it. A lot of people are bidding online. We've sold a lot online, not a lot, but we've sold some online, but a lot of them come in today, so that means they're for the next two days, you know. So really looking forward to it. I will see you tomorrow. Okay, thank you. Day three has just wrapped up, so I hope you enjoyed my video recap. Now, we are getting ready for day four. It starts tomorrow on Thursday, and it'll be the mixed sale, so I'll see you there. Of course, for complete coverage of the sale, you can check out the Harness Racing Update newsletter. I'm Heather Vitale for HRU.